on. What does growing up in a cult do to a child? In Waco, the result was tragic. Now, Action News investigates what happened to the children of one of the most notorious cults of all, the Manson family. What was it like growing up surrounded by drugs, sex, and murder? As adults, how do they cope with Manson's evil legacy? Who are they today? Meet Manson's children on Channel 2 Action News, tomorrow at 11. One of the most infamous cults worldwide surfaced right here in Southern California. Tonight, investigative reporter Harvey Levin went around the country searching for the children of the Charles Manson family. Harvey joins us now with a preview of his exclusive series. Harvey. Jose, the children born and raised by this cult are now adults. It's been nearly a quarter century since Charles Manson and his followers shocked the world with their violent rampage. We wanted to find out how the children of the Manson family were affected by the deeds of their parents. You're looking at Charles Manson's flesh and blood. When Michael Bruner was brought into this world 25 years ago, his father's greeting was a stunning omen. As Mary Bruner gave birth, Michael's father, Charles Manson, bit through her umbilical cord with his teeth. How does someone cope with the infamy of being the offspring of one of the most reviled criminals in American history? There's no reason to treat me any different than, than, than the next guy, um, you know, just because of, of my biological father. Uh, there's, and and I, I think people do. Mostly, I, I think I get left alone more than than the other person, you know. Uh, Are they scared of you? I wouldn't say scared. I, I think, uh, you know, they don't want to offend. They don't, the, people that don't know me uh, have a tendency not to try to get to know me. other Michaels who were born into the Manson family at the Spawn Ranch in Chatsworth. A few had their first glimpse of the world in a jail ward. I was chained down and the doctor came at the last minute and said, I'm not going to deliver this baby unless you unchain her. And they finally uh, conceded they would take one leg and give me a long chain so I could move a little bit. The parents chose to join the Manson family, but the children had no choice. More than a dozen children lived with the family in its heyday at the Spawn Movie Ranch. Stories of rampant drug use among family members are legendary, but now we know this freedom of choice filtered down to the children. I have a three-year-old came up and I was taking a joint, hit off a joint and asked me for a hit. I probably would have to let him experience it. In a strange way, Manson family members took their cue from the children. Indeed, family members say Charles Manson himself set the tone for the preeminence of children. We were uh, taught that uh, the children were the highest on the scale, especially male children first, then female children, then men, then women. Nonetheless, the children of the Manson family had no choice but to grow up in the shadow of a legacy that by all rights could haunt them for a lifetime. For Michael Bruner, his salvation was his family, not the Manson family, but relatives thousands of miles away. Shortly after the Tate-LaBianca murders, when Michael was a year and a half old, he was sent here to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, to live with Mary Bruner's mother and father on this street. But in reality, Michael's grandparents became his mother and father, nurturing him, protecting him, loving him. Michael says it was the most important thing to happen in his life. I was given a second chance, you know, I, I was, uh, when I was very, very young, I, my first chance or my first uh, little world got rocked and, uh, and my grandparents, my parents uh, gave me a second chance and, uh, and I really appreciate it, I love them a lot for it, I really do. And how does Michael Bruner feel about his biological father? He's, uh, he's, he's just somebody far, far away, and he doesn't, doesn't, he doesn't come up. For what Charles Manson did, do you think he deserved the death penalty? I don't know. I don't, I don't have an opinion. 
Tomorrow, we'll profile Michael Bruner, Charles Manson's son. You'll hear how he grew up. We'll tell you about the problems he had no choice but to confront. He'll talk about his own family, what he plans on telling his child about grandfather Charles, who now wants to reestablish family ties. And that's tomorrow on Action News Nightcast at 11. It'll also be interesting to find out how you found them, too. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. This was not an easy task. These are not people who were seeking out publicity, but they were willing to talk with us. I'm kind of uh, easygoing, laid back, um, easy to get along with. Meet Charles Manson's son. Michael Bruner has grown up wishing he had no connection to Manson and his deeds, which are now seared into the American consciousness. Bruner says he has no choice but to accept his roots and then move on. I'm sorry what, you know, all, all of what happened. I, you know, I wish things could be different, but uh, they're not. Uh, you know, I wish a lot of things could be different. Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess I have no control over a lot of things. I had no control over that, obviously. Michael was born 25 years ago in a Topanga Canyon shack. Family members recall Michael's mother, Mary Bruner, smoked marijuana to relieve labor pains. Even as an infant, Michael was uneasy in the presence of his father. From what I gather, Michael did not like Charlie. Charlie would put him through his paces, trying to take all fear away from him, uh, throwing up, him up in the air and hanging him and, uh, from his feet and swinging him around and making sure he had no more fear until he stopped crying and totally gave up. He, uh, Charlie would, would uh, keep it up. When Michael was a year and a half old, the Manson family shocked the world by their vicious slaughter. Mary Bruner was not involved in the Tate LaBianca murders. She was awaiting prosecution for credit card fraud. Shortly after the murders, Michael was sent to live with his maternal grandparents on this street in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Those who know Michael best say the move was his salvation. His grandmother was extremely supportive. Uh, she worked with us closely. Uh, if he had any kind of problems, she was right there. Uh, she is really the hero here. In the early years, Michael's grandparents chose not to tell their grandson about his father or his heinous acts. When the secret was exposed, Michael was in the third grade here at Arlington Heights Elementary School. Predictably, some of his classmates were cruel. Michael found notes with the words, your father is a murderer. That's when I did find out more about it, was when I got the, the notes. So, uh, you know, I, I didn't find out too much, and I, I think I found out enough to, to satisfy my curiosity and let, let myself know that uh, I, I don't need to know any more than I do. Michael's friends say, for the most part, classmates tread lightly on the subject of Charles Manson, but not always. He just walked up to Mike and he said, is Charles Manson your dad? And Mike just looks at him and is like, yeah, so? And the guy walked away and he just, you know, he thought he was going to give him a speech or do something Manson-like, and he was pretty disappointed. Did you ever worry that genetics might be part of what he did and that you might in some way be at risk? No. No, I, I, I don't believe that. I think he had a, a real bad upbringing. I know he had a real bad upbringing. Or I had one of the best. I was I was raised by great people. He was uh, what, you know the greatest people on the face of the earth. He was raised by by uh, not the greatest. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Charles Manson has tried to reestablish family ties with Michael Bruner. Bruner has strong feelings about that. He's now in the Western United States trying to build a life for himself and his own child. We will tell you how Michael Bruner is looking to the future while dealing with the past tomorrow on Action News Nightcast at 11. I, I would imagine he doesn't try to establish ties himself. No, he doesn't. In fact, he's uh, been very resistant. He's torn up letters that he's received from Charles Manson, so he just wants nothing to do with him. And he remains secretive about his past? Well, he, he's not so much secretive as he doesn't offer that information to people. When they find out, he'll talk about it. He likes to deal with it quickly and then move on. I should say his birthright, not his past. Right. His birthright. Charles Manson's son faces the challenge telling the truth to his own son. That's coming up next. Cults are a topic in the news because of the terrible tragedy in Waco, Texas. The latest edition of Newsweek focuses on what happens to children who enter a world which is often radically different from ordinary life. Our Harvey Levin has also been talking to someone whose life is intertwined with one of the most infamous cults 
the Manson family. He has more in tonight's cover story.